Hi, I'm Tony Croft here with Oklahoma Career Tech, and this is Career Tech Conversations. Today, we are talking about work-based learning and apprenticeships, and we are honored and proud to be joined by Brent Haken, who is our state director, and also we have Justin Seiler. Now, Justin, you recently uh, transitioned positions here in the agency. Tell us a little bit about what you were doing and what you're doing now. I will still be in our workforce training division. Previously, I was serving as our adult and career development coordinator, so helping with short-term open enrollment courses across the system. Um, but now moving into um, statewide work-based learning liaison. It's a long title, but basically what that means is working with our apprenticeship team to advance our work-based learning and apprenticeship efforts throughout Oklahoma in the career tech system. One thing about working at career tech is there can, or probably any state agency, is there content to be a little bit of a, a word salad, lots of acronyms flying around, lots of terms flying around. Can either of you distill down for me when we're talking about work-based learning and apprenticeships, are those the same thing or is it more like an umbrella thing? How, how, how does that work? Well, you want to take the you and me too. Go ahead. I'll go ahead and take it a little bit. So uh, first off, we're really excited that Justin's joining that team and is going to get to help to lead what we're doing in work-based learning. Um, and, and so to break that down, work-based learning is all things that students do to, to put hands on in a work environment. So it may be job shadows are a, a part of work-based learning that are at the lower level. It may be apprenticeships that are at the highest level where they're actually paid and on the job and the employment is part of the training. Or it may be somewhere in between where it's an internship. And an internship... Uh, can have a lot of varieties within it, but it's a lower level than an apprenticeship. And so we're, what we're hoping to show Oklahoma students is that they can get on that cycle all the way from a job shadow to a, uh, to, to a career fair, whatever it may be their starting point, and they can end up with employment and they can be getting an education the whole time. So as we build this out for Oklahomans, we think that career tech is vital in showing everyone that work-based learning is now and has been, but is really now a focus of education. So last week, I was able to go to a private business where I interviewed uh, one of the managers. They have two career tech apprentices from Canadian Valley uh, who are in precision machining. And typically, when we're thinking about apprenticeships, I think that the general public and even people in our space, their mind generally goes to those type of uh, careers, right? HVAC, electrical machining, uh, those types of skill trades. You were saying a moment ago that apprenticeships can be built out for other things. That's right. Yeah. Most people assume it's a hard trade or a skilled trade, traditional trade of some kind, but there are thousands of apprenticeable occupations out there. Uh, we recently wrote an apprenticeship plan for floral design at a florist shop, um, which was what makes it a very exciting delivery tool in our workforce development um, toolbox is gives us an opportunity to serve um, companies of any size out of any industry and help with their workforce development needs. Does that typically look like, hey, here's a certain set of competencies that we're all going to agree on, and here's a certain number of hours that we're all going to agree on? How does that look? Yeah, so there's kind of five key components that make up an apprenticeship. The first is it is a paid job. So an apprenticeship is an opportunity to earn while you learn is kind of the saying piece of it. There has to be related instruction or classroom time, um, so a structured curriculum of some kind um, towards the Specific occupation, that can be determined by the employer. All of this is industry-driven. Um, the other piece of it, there has to be on-the-job learning. Those are those targeted learning objectives that you mentioned. They're the employer and the school and the apprentice all agree ahead of time. We're going to learn these eight key objectives to get us um, towards the end of this apprenticeship. Um, and then there also needs to be a credential of some kind at the end of it, even if it is just, I completed this apprenticeship. Um, but if we can align with also, also a industry credential or certificate of some kind that's portable across the industry, um, that's another key element to an apprentice. Um, and so there is two main pieces of how that all ties together. That's a related instruction and on-the-job learning. Um, and those on-the-job learning piece covers the targeted objectives agreed to by the employer and the apprentice. Yeah. So who who is... Uh... Who is being the initiator of these, or does it kind of go three different ways? Because, you know, the way I see it, the the stakeholders in this are, of course, the apprentice, the person who's who's going to benefit, hopefully, from this. Obviously, um, an, an employer can yeah. can benefit from it and that they're they're getting 
skilled people. Um, uh, who who comes to Career Tech and 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 initiates the process, or is it that your department is is kind of feelers out in industry and saying like, hey, how can we make this industry get an apprenticeship? So it's really an all of the above approach. Yeah. And Justin did a great job of explaining how they work. But when we um, brought the the federal grant to Oklahoma Career Tech to carry this out, the the mission hasn't changed. Everyone needs to have the opportunity for an apprenticeship. Not everybody will fit. Okay, so it's the employer may come to us and say, hey, I would love to have some apprentices. And, and that's a great way that we start matching up students or, a, you know, that could be adults or they could be our older high school that are aging toward adults to find their right fit. Or it may be the student that says, hey, I need a job, but I also want to you know, learn in this occupation. So we may have a role there. And sometimes the tech center is going to have a, a large role of just playing matchmaker. So uh, that's really how we can make sure that these are successful for all people. What's important for people to understand is apprenticeships are not going to be the perfect solution for every scenario. But they're another tool, like he said, that makes us successful in serving businesses. So Oklahoma Career Tech has a, a long history and a reputation of serving businesses. That's what we do. That's how we built other, our education. So mm -hmm. apprenticeships are a way that, hey, we can get every business something that they need if you're willing to, to buy in as well. So it's a really cool and unique tool that we haven't done a good job in Oklahoma with. And so now we have a platform that lets students of all ages understand what they are and how can this work for you? How can this fit? Right now, when we have such a demand in the workforce, it's a great tool to be rolling out. If there's a student watching this that is, uh, I mean, let's say, let's say they're, they're in the early stages of learning uh, some of the things we learn in, in communication department, right? Let's say they're one of our tech centers, they're in like a multimedia thing or they're in graphic design or maybe they're learning to use a camera. Um, do they have the opportunity to maybe reach out to a business and then initiate some kind of apprenticeship process? Or is that a really bad question to ask? Yeah. Well, it's kind of a, there's a lot of different ways that could play out. Okay. Um, we have, okay, career guide and connect to business as an opportunity for students to connect to work-based learning opportunities. Okay. So companies can basically opt in to say we were, were interested in hosting a work-based learning opportunity, whether that's mm -hmm. being a, a class speaker or all the way up to hosting an internship or an apprenticeship hiring part-time job, um, that piece of it. And so a, a student has access there to look to see what's available in their um, specific area. Um, but if there is also a targeted employer that they have in mind that they want to work with and they might not see them and connect to business, it's not out of the realm for them to um, reach out directly and say, hey, I want to come work here. Um, what can we What can we do? So in that scenario, a student may go to a business and apply for a job and they may work with that employer and say, hey, I, I want to work here, but I also want to continue learning. Would you be interested in an apprenticeship? That's the beauty of work-based learning is it's all things. It, it, so if you walk through, um, let's just walk through a, a student from sixth grade and above. So hopefully with ICAP present in K-12 schools and what we can do, we, we can now serve a student from there through their, their whole career. So a student walks into their sixth grade classroom, hopefully they're starting to get exposed to careers through career fairs, um, through visiting on field trips, all those things. And those are the first part of work-based learning where you're seeing you're being exposed. Okay, So they, they fill that phase after they see lots of careers. So when I was superintendent at Morrison, we tried to push where every student through seventh through 12th would have exposure to 70 careers over their, their career in, in high school. So they saw now, maybe it's a junior, senior, maybe sophomore, whatever it is, I think I might want to do a summer internship or a summer job or something like that. They can jump into that part of work-based learning and they can get, maybe it's a one-time exposure that's during school. It's 120 hour credit uh, that they can get in high school as part of their work release or internship that's available already in high school. We can help foster that in our K-12 programs. Then as they get closer to that working age, they may say, I, I want a real apprenticeship. So they can take a work-based learning experience all the way around the continuum and make sure that they are getting real experiences that that help limit. Okay, I thought I liked that. Yeah, I really didn't like that. So I'm going to jump on and get another experience. Okay, this is the one I'm interested in. I'm going to do an internship, and now I'm going to do an apprenticeship. So it's stackable. It's usable at all walks of employment. Adults can use it. Uh, high school kids can use work-based learning. The apprenticeship model is is very versatile. So anybody can use it. So it's really exciting. We all have blind spots. So I, I don't know a lot about 
uh, you know, everything you guys do and all the initiatives that are, that are pushed forward, um, and the great things that are going on at career tech. Is there anything I didn't ask about today or, or t we didn't talk about today that is important for folks to know about, or did we do an adequate overview of, <laughs> of WBL and, uh, and apprenticeships? I mean, I think we did a good job. I think the biggest takeaway from the apprenticeship standpoint is that it's a industry driven career pathway, um, from an apprentice point of view, but then also from a workforce development point of view. So if, yeah. as an employer looking at this, they're, they're the driver's seat of how that apprenticeship benefits their company and meets their needs. And so um, I think that's one of the common maybe misconception or maybe just something that's misunderstood about apprentices is it's not dictated to the company what that apprenticeship yeah. looks like. We have some guidelines and some guardrails, if you will, of it needs to fit within this time. There's, you mentioned earlier, hour minimums and things like that. It has to happen over a certain period of time. Um, but within that time, it's up to the employer and yeah. the industry as to of what happens within that, within that apprenticeship. Right. They, so, and you, you guys agree on competencies, right? There's certain outlined competencies that yeah. those students are meeting both in the classroom and then at, on the job. What's really cool, he said industry driven, which is, is the focus of an apprenticeship, but also it's for all different sizes of, mm -hmm. of industry. So you might have your largest employers in Oklahoma that would say, hey, we could do apprentices and do a really good job. And they may want to provide as a statewide approach, whether it's a healthcare system or whatever that may be, they may want to provide some of the related instruction themselves. And that could be done at a statewide approach. Or yeah. it may be a very small business that we've never been able to build our career tech programs for yeah. because there's just not enough in employment. So um, maybe a flor florist, like you mentioned, we don't have enough jobs to put a full-time program in, but we could really do an apprenticeship. I know there's some areas that are doing that in plumbing, and there's all kinds of things out there where they're doing these one-offs that we couldn't put a full-time program in, but we could do an apprentice for you. We want to thank Brent and Justin for their time coming in studio today. If you have a question about any of the resources we talked about, the main hub for that is going to be our agency website, which is oklahoma.gov slash career tech. This video podcast is also available in audio form wherever you get your audio podcast. Uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Subscribe to our audio podcast feeds. Until next time, I'm Tony Croft with Oklahoma Career Tech.